Hello everyone, in this video we're gonna talk about how to find complex zeros of quadratic functions. So this is very similar to solving a quadratic equation by trying to use the process of factoring, but in this case we're talking about a function, we have f of x, and so finding the zeros of the function just is a different term for the same thing as find the solutions of x, right? So here we have number one, two, and three. So let's go with number one, we have f of x equals seven x squared plus 70. So if we think about how this parabola would look, the 70 there would be our vertical translation, and that's where our vertex is going to be located. And since a is seven, our parabola is gonna open up, right? So we're gonna have a parabola that opens up, and it's above the x-axis. So it's not going to cross the x-axis, so we're not gonna have any real zeros. And that's gonna be the case for all three of these, like number two, it, the problem's gonna open down, but it's also been transited four units down, right? So it's not gonna cross the x-axis. And then for number three, translated up, and it opens up, so once again, it's not gonna cross. So all of these solutions, or all of these zeros that we're gonna find, we call them complex zeros because our parabola is not crossing the x-axis, so we don't have any real zeros. All right, so when we find the zero of the function, we're trying to figure out what is x when y is equal to zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in zero for f of x, because remember, f of x is like our variable y. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and factor the, left, the right side. So I'm gonna factor out a seven, so that's gonna give me x squared plus 10 in parentheses. And now we can divide both sides by seven because zero divided by seven is still zero. So now we're just gonna have zero is equal to x squared plus 10. So now if we subtract 10, we could write this as x squared equals negative 10. And now we're gonna take the square root of both sides. So we get x is equal to positive or negative, And this is square root of negative 10. And now here we can write this as square root of 10 times the square root of negative one, right? Because that negative one is gonna, square root of negative one is gonna give us our i. And so we could write our answer, our two zeros are just positive and negative i root 10. Okay, so positive i root 10 and negative i root 10. All right, for number two, we're gonna do the same thing. Zero equals negative x squared minus four. And this add x squared to both sides. So we get x squared equals negative four. And now we can take the square root. So we get x is equal to positive or negative square root of negative four. And now let's write this as positive or negative square root of four times the square root of negative one, right? So the square root of four would be two. So we get x equals positive or negative two, and then the square root of negative one would be i, so positive and negative two i. All right, and for our last one, we're gonna write zero equals nine x squared plus one. Let's subtract one from both sides. I'm gonna write this as nine x squared equals negative one. Divide by nine, so we get x squared equals negative one over nine, and let's take the square root of both sides. Now remember when we take the square root of a fraction, it's like taking writing a fraction of square roots, which just means we could take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. So we get x is equal to positive or negative, and we could write this as a square root of negative one over the square root of nine. Well, here this is gonna give us, we know that square root of negative one is i, and the square root of nine is three. So we could write that as positive or negative i over three, or you could write this as positive or negative one third i, right? And they both mean the same thing, okay? And so that's how you can find some complex zeros of quadratic functions.